There's always been the potential for controversy. Not every development has its controversy, but we live in a state where there's a lot of boom and bust, and so during those boom phases, things happen so fast that there is possibilities for misunderstanding. Wyoming's got a rich history of development. I mean, you could go up north of Casper and look at the Teapot Dome, and there's been oil and gas development in that country for a long time, probably going on 100 years. When it comes to energy development in Wyoming, there's, you know, there's really two sides to how you get from a, a prospective field or, or, or resource uh, to field development where you've got infrastructure and jobs and production flowing. You know, the first is the technical geologic side. Uh, we are blessed with magnificent resources here, but some we can get to and some we can't. So applying new technology to, you know, to drill deeper, uh, to drill with less impact, to, to reach known reservoirs uh, is, is something that we take a hard look at. I guess originally they're interested in leasing minerals, and that typically would be a phone call. Um, and then through either a follow-up email, phone call, etc., we would uh, establish a two-way communication and then set up a meeting face-to-face. -face. Basically, they would sit down with us and tell us what their plans are. So they show us a map and they say, okay, we've got this many acres leased and these are spots on the map that we think there may be some potential for some development. We get a, an opportunity at that point to voice any concerns that we might, might have and as well as work with the company on preferred access points. Uh, we like to try and work with them on those locations and if it's too close to a draw, too close to um, a creek, too close to some sort of topography that, that we're not comfortable with, we tell them that. And we say, is there any way you can move it? Almost always there's options. Almost always there's alternatives that between their flexibility and us working with them, we're able to come up with a solution that might look like a problem to begin with. Ten years ago, if you would have told me that we could directionally drill to the extent we can today, I would have said, you're crazy, and look what we've done as an industry. Give me five years and ten years in the future, and, and we're going to be able to demonstrate to Wyoming and beyond that we can be very innovative and reduce our impacts and produce more. You know, that's the technical side of it. Uh, in, in Wyoming, given that you know, we, we're predominantly under some federal nexus with federal lands, either surface or subsurface, you've got the regulatory and the permitting process, which is equally as important. Uh, and that's gaining initial approval through a large-scale environmental impact statement, and then subsequent smaller approvals from a well-by-well -well basis for that development. And, and that can take five to 10 years worth of analysis to get to that point. And that's one of the limiting challenges we have right now is speeding that process up so we can mirror our technical advances with a regulatory approach uh, that allows us to get on the ground sooner, more effectively, uh, and bring production online and jobs. A company or an entity will come to us and, and have a need to fill on a regulatory level. Uh, there's usually a review process through uh, most regulators that the public can be involved as well. So in terms of uh, how I feel about the energy industry, it's uh, a large part of what we do. And I've always felt that it's important to be part of the process before disturbance, during disturbance, and after disturbance. Roughly 50% of our surface has federal mineral under it. That's 50% of our ranch is a split estate in that regard. So if a company comes in with an, a federal mineral lease, you know, already bought up, then they come to us and say, we have this lease, which gives us a right to go develop or explore on your land. And I think historically they pushed their way into those situations a lot more than they do now. Whatever group of people you want to uh, focus on, I've always assumed that 90% are good. The 10% that are bad players, uh, can leave a, a bad taste in the mouths of uh, people that interact with them. I think on any side of an issue, you, you, you've got 80% of, uh, you know, of the population that's willing to learn, listen, come to the table and work towards solutions. Uh, and then you've got extremes on, on both sides of any given issue. And, and those are typically driven by uh, an ideology 
that then drives their uh, actions and how they approach an issue with, you know, almost zealotry towards, you know, it's my way or the highway. And honestly, working in Wyoming and, you know, working with everybody in the state, it's not how we do business. That's not how you come up with good solutions. One of our biggest complaints, I say one of our biggest beefs probably, has been gates being left open. I mean, that's a that gets under a lot of uh, landowners' saddle blankets, I would say. It's one of those burr things that, it, it, because it does happen, particularly when you have a lot of contractors or subcontractors that are coming out to have to do work on the property. People that aren't landowners or involved with livestock, you don't usually get the gate thing. That's been my experience over the years is that uh, people need to respect the diversity of opinions that are out there. Um, they need to respect other people's property. You find a gate closed, you close it. You leave it open if you find it open. From a philosophical standpoint from an oil and gas company and, and part of my job is interaction with landowners, mutual respect. Uh, you, you have to clearly understand what their needs are and what their expectations are and make sure you train your team to follow those needs and expectations. Shut the gate behind you, stay on designated roads, respect their livestock and their dogs and, and all that comes with being a guest on somebody else's property. Wyoming is very diverse in all four corners of the state. What works in one corner may not work in another. Uh, what works in one industry may not work for another. I try to avoid those broad brush assumptions that sometimes you, you hear being made. There's often a misconception about energy development and, and how seriously those of us in the industry, and in particular us at Jonah Energy, take protecting the environment. Uh, you know, we've got permits on one side and then we've got relationships with conservation groups you know, our employees, the communities we live in, and it's awfully important that we make sure that every single day we take that approach and take those stakeholders into consideration as we develop. There's always things that come up, there's always things that happen. Maybe the attitude with the energy companies has changed in the last 20 years. They probably had a bad reputation um, from the 70s and things were moving really fast and, and maybe they skipped um, some things that they shouldn't have. Um, but it seems to me like certainly our experience and then in my conversations with neighbors, most landowners seem to be generally pleased with the, with the relationships that they have with these energy companies. Techniques, reclamation techniques have improved over the years. Uh, they've learned a lot, we've learned a lot. What types of plants, what types of grasses to, to go back into a reclamation mix, those sorts of things. We've seen significant changes within the industry in the last 20 years with a heightened respect uh, and, and attention to environmental issues and, and protection of all that we hold dear. Uh, we have also seen during that time a lot more interest in what we do and that gives us an opportunity as an industry to educate people on what truly we do and how we protect and develop resources. That's been a growing move. I, I think the education component uh, uh, the industry in the past had not been good at. Uh, today I think it's much better and the public's responding accordingly with you know some very significant knowledge about what we are and what we aren't. You know just getting a diverse group of people together and trying to find common ground and ways to respect each other and ways to move forward I think can be a challenge sometime. But I think it's really important as we move through these large landscape issues where there are a lot of players. We can disagree and still work towards a common solution. And I think that's uh, where we need to be right now in, in natural resource issues. I would say that as long as the energy industry continues to respect landowners, they will receive a mutual respect. And starting the relationship off in the beginning correctly with the landowner is probably the most important thing for long-term success of energy development on private land. Uh, you know, we as an industry need to continue to innovate 
uh, on reducing surface disturbance, uh, reducing our air emission impacts, you know, reducing uh, other impacts to, uh, to other natural resources. And we're seeing significant progress in that direction. So there's always going to be people that are going to be unconvinced that I'm telling the truth or somebody on a, you know, another issue is telling the truth. But if you take time to learn and listen and understand the facts and then form an opinion, uh, usually the result is somewhere in the middle.